flat terrain, hilly terrain, it doesn't matter. This is the chicken tractor you need to build no matter the terrain. Folks, today I'm extremely excited to talk about what it is we're gonna do. I've been wanting to do it for a long, long time. We've had our chickens working in the barn. They've been busy, they've been doing their thing, but we just haven't had time with all the other little projects that we've been getting done. We haven't had time to do what we've been itching to do for the longest time. And that is make a chicken tractor. Now, the first thing you're probably wondering, in previous videos, I had the other, I had the Deluxe Model 4000, and I think it was the fourth version of that type of chicken tractor we'd built. Now, it's all wonderful. It's all fine and dandy if you have flat terrain. It's fine and dandy for when we were wanting to do Jeff Lawton's chicken tractor on steroids with, um, with just one person being able to pull it. It had its virtues, but you know what? It's not doing a whole lot of good in a terrain like this. Number one, it's too heavy. And number two, it's too top heavy. And number three, we would have to tether it. If you watch in previous videos, I'd have to tether it in case some heavy wind came along. Well, it's not just the wind we're dealing with here. It's the terrain. It's never been a problem with us before. So we had to go back to the drawing board and find out and think about, and that's why it's taken so long to think about exactly the best chicken tractor to use in this environment. And folks, believe me, I can't even tell you how many chicken tractors I've built from uh, ones inspired by Jeff Lawton, ones that we've taken uh, from Joel Salatin, you name it. If it's a chicken tractor, we've built it. But in this terrain, none of those others were really, really, of the ones we built, none of them were really getting it done. We always run into the weight problem. We always run into the issue with having these steep hills. Well, today we're going to do something different. I'm not kidding here, folks, and I'm not kissing up when I say, in my view, in my opinion, the most efficient the most elegantly designed chicken tractor for what we want to do is the one designed by Justin Rhodes. Now, that design in and of itself is fantastic. It's efficient. It's, it's got everything you need right there in that chicken tractor, and it's easy enough for one person to pull 40 birds. Well, I don't have 40 birds. And so I didn't want to build a 6x6 or his 4x4, which is the one that is like scaled down. We did one that's in between. We did a 4x6. Number one, we had to make it light enough to where we can get it through this terrain. And number two, it had to be nimble enough to be able to stake it in this terrain without having to put out riggers in 10 different places. So we had to make it extremely light because my wife is the one primarily pulling this stuff. Michelle is 99% of the times when the animals get moved, William and I were doing other things and she's doing it by herself. And we were also thinking that it might apply to other women out there who are having to do this sort of thing in similar terrain. So we've come up with a way of doing Justin Rhodes chicken tractor, but making it considerably lighter. Now I'm sure Justin has already considered, in fact, I think I heard him discuss it, that he wanted it heavy enough that it didn't blow away and light enough to be able to pull. But we need it extremely, extremely light. And we found a way, we're pretty sure we found a way to overcome it being too light that it might blow away. So here we go, folks. Here's the build that we've been waiting to do. So let's get started. All right, this is where we get down to brass tacks. All right, so you have a four by six structure in this case. You can do it any size you want. Justin has done it as small as four, four by four. We thought we'd meet it halfway and plus it meets the number of chickens we have. So we get a square to, on the corners just to try to get, us, get ourselves in the ballpark. But what's most important is that you measure the corners. If you don't have equal, side, equal, equal measurements on all those corners, you're gonna wind up with a parallelogram instead of a square. And folks, that is not the kind of structure you wanna build anything on. Now, this is how we handle our corners on this one. In Justin's, and I'm sure he's, he's engineered it that way, he's put corner braces in there with two by fours. In our cases, we've used quarter inch plywood and we've made little gussets out of it. And it adds the stability, it adds the strength, but it doesn't add a whole lot of weight. And we've done this a lot of times in the past with our other chicken tractors, so we thought we'd try it here. So what you see us putting in now, William is drilling, um, and then he's gonna chase it with a screw. And we're, these are mostly not only supporting the bottom of the chicken tractor, but it's also going a long way in helping to support the axle that's gonna come in the future. So it's really nothing more than, you know, drilling the holes and driving on with some screws three inch screws. 
Okay, folks, this is where we get around to making it more and more like a chicken tractor. So we're putting one inch mesh in the bottom of here. Now keep in mind, and Justin says as much, that you can't necessarily find this stuff everywhere. We were able to find it by a complete accident in some hardware store around here. So you could use a, a tack stapler, but in this case, you know, if you're precise enough, you can, you can use a pneumatic uh, staple gun and get that in there. Okay, here we have William installing the roost. Now our roost are going to go the six foot length of this thing, not the four foot way. And we put them a foot on center, so if it's a four inch box there, well, they're going to be, you know, every foot. So we flip it over and then continue on the other side, stapling the one inch mesh to the actual roofs in accordance with Justin's instructions. Okay, the floor is down and it didn't take much time at all. Now it's time to get down to brass tacks. Now it's time to stand up the corner post and build the rest of the superstructure. This is the fun part. Okay, so you're gonna to have to stand these things up and not let them fall down like you just saw there. And once again, we're gonna use gussets. Um, Justin uses uh, corner posts and those are completely fine, but we got plenty of quarter inch plywood. It's light, it's easy. And folks, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that in every single case, we always put some of that Gorilla wood glue on there. And now, when you put your gusset on there, just dip it in water first, give it a few seconds, and then put it back on there. Now that's part of the manufacturer's instructions. And folks, if you, hey, believe me when I tell you, this stuff is as hard as woodpecker lips. In fact, if you go to try to pull those posts off after this thing is already dried and cured and everything else, it'll rip the wood off, but the glue will still be standing there. I'm not kidding either. Okay, so now we take the one buys and pretty much all of this is definitely in accordance with uh, Justin's instructions. Um, just a smaller structure. So we were running this thing along the sides and you want to make absolutely sure that everything is as level as possible. Now it's not in the video, but from time to time I put my torpedo level on there and make sure that everything was hunky dory. And folks, I also want to point out that the wood we used in this, I should have told you before, is actually heat treated lumber. So it's not chemically treated. So these gussets, we put them everywhere folks. And believe me, these things will tighten up a structure when this thing is all set and cured, you cannot move it. Okay, so here's another deviation that we've made. And Justin's door folds down and it's a beautiful and once again, it's an elegant, elegant way of doing it. Well, I have an automatic chicken door that I've used in the past that isn't exactly designed for this, but we're gonna put it here and we're gonna have to retrofit it in some kind of way to make it work. Well, that's why the difference here is that I have an opening, I think, of about 13 inches. And it's not the same as Justin's, but hey, it all works and, it, and it's, we're retrofitting it to make it work for us. Now, we're making sure those are perfectly plumb, everything's level, and then we put it in there. So now we go on to the back part where, once again, in accordance to his instructions, we put these uh, bottom, bottom pieces in there that are one buys. And in our case, we're just drilling them. Later on, we'll come back in and put gussets in, but right now we're just drilling it and every single thing gets wood glue. Now, the reason I'm adding another piece here is because I didn't pay complete attention to the instructions. I dropped it about an inch too low so the boxes wouldn't work. So I had to put another one by on top to make it work. Not a, not a big screw up, but you know, it, I'm glad I caught it early. You know, it would absolutely not be a good thing if I built this whole thing, had the, had the nesting boxes in there, and all of a sudden, I can't get them out. Next up are the nesting boxes. Now, we did a few things out of order. Um, Justin has four, four boxes in his particular design, but we only put three in ours. So we, we, we thought it was important to spend a little more time trying to dry fit this thing together before we actually put it together. Okay, time for the nesting boxes, folks. And once again, our best friends, the way we do this stuff is our gussets. Now this will ultimately be the bottom side, but we're making it perfectly square using that square and we dry fit it with those boxes. And folks, remember that it sits, there's a lip on the bottom side of these boxes that's actually a 12 by 12. So we wanna make sure, absolutely sure, 
The math is one thing, I can do that, and I do it every day I'm, I'm doing electric work, but it's entirely another when you dry fit in there. So, we take it and we clamp this stuff to the frame, and we're gonna go ahead and drill it. Now, every glue connection, every connection we make has glue on it. There's Gorilla Glue, and it's been wet prior to that. So, you may not see it in every video, but that's exactly what's going on. Uh, so, hit it with the Gorilla Glue, stick it in there, hold it with the clamps. Now we got the vertical support going in and pretty much the way Justin describes. Now once again, you're gonna get tired of hearing me say the word gusset, but that's exactly what it is. Now it's not in the video, but we chase each gusset here with also a screw. Okay, now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. We got a frame, we got nesting boxes, and it's all tight. And it's the perfect size, and I'm already liking where this thing is going. But one of the biggest deviations that we take here is the wheels. Now, folks, I want to be absolutely clear. Justin has the most simple way of going about attaching wheels to this. We've just done it a little bit differently. I wanted to see, number one, if it would work. And also, it's one of those creative liberties. I'm sure he wouldn't mind me taking um, because it works for us. In fact, keep in mind that this entire structure here is designed specifically. There's only really three major modifications that we make in this. It doesn't necessarily improve it. There are just modifications that we make because we live in this terrain, this extreme terrain. And folks, I would always, now I want to give this little disclaimer here. I want to be absolutely clear that if you've never built anything before like this, go exclude, do the recipe, do the recipe. Don't be that person on Food Network who criticizes a recipe when I read in the description that you change three quarters of the of the ingredients in it. So I'm changing this up because I've built a number of chicken tractors in the past and I'm knowing exactly where I should make deviations that work for me. But folks, Joel Salatin will tell you, and I'm sure Justin Rhodes will tell you too, that if you've never done this before, stick to the people that have given you specific instructions, build a few of them. And then when you feel like you, that you have enough running room, try it your own way. If you feel there is a need for modification, sometimes the way they've come up with is the best way. So in your particular case, and Justin Rhodes' way may very well be the best way to go about this. In our particular area, like I said, I need more weight shaved off of it, and I need a way for this thing to stick to the ground. All right, well, here's the part where it gets more into the some of the deviations we make here, folks. And i got to point out, by the way, this thing is tight and all we've used are those little plywood quarter inch gussets. Now what you see me doing right here is I'm taking a three quarter paddle bit. Now for the axle of those wheels that is a three quarter rod. Now folks it helps when you're somebody like me and you're a tradesman well I know pipe fitters and guess what they gave me a piece of this a uh, couple of pieces of this three quarter rod. So we set it up exactly the way Justin sets his up. The only difference is we're not using um, we're not using EMT straps and putting it to the bottom. I wanted to drill it in there. I know it kind of sets the specs off a little bit, but I wanted to drill it into the wood and then put it on each side. We basically chase it with a nut. And there's almost no deviation here. So, but instead of the, I think it's 17 inches or maybe 17 and a half that he has for your, your the, the uh, little balance or up front here. I'm not sure what you call it. I guess a leg up front. I had to cut it down a little bit because remember the elevation of my tire dropped is going through the frame instead of on top of it. And so really there's no deviation at all here. It's, it's more of the same. It's uh, putting those in there. We glue all the stuff and now here we are. We are back to a model. And at this point we got really excited because I was wishing now at this point we made a six by six. It was that doggone light. All right, well that concludes video number one. We had to break this down into two segments and we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what makes this more. Justin Rhodes already makes an all-terrain chicken tractor. There's a couple of modifications here and they're very, very minor that make it more all-terrain for what we have to do here. There's also an automatic chicken door that isn't at all designed for what we're going to do with it. And we're still trying at this point to figure out how to make it work. So in the next video, we're going to cover we're going to finish this thing up. We're going to put these chickens in there and we're going to see how well they like it. Really, that's what it comes down to. How much do the chickens like it? Stick around for part two. 
This is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy from Perma Pastures Farm. Remember, if you like what you see, subscribe, tell your friends about us. We'll see you next time.